السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من أحدث في أمرنا هذا ما ليس منه فهو رد أو كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم <تصفيق> As it is the month of Rabiul Awal, I thought we speak about some of the common practices that come up in Rabiul Awal. And uh, before I continue on the topic, I forgot to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our Lord, our Creator, and peace and blessings be upon Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the final messenger. <coughs> when a prophet brings a religion, Part of the human struggle is to recognize what the Prophet wants from us and what he doesn't want from us. So when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught something, he would make sure there's no confusion. And likewise, the Sahaba, they would make sure not to teach the religion in a way that it causes confusion. In fact, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had a fear the Qur'an and Hadith might get mixed up. So he actually said in the beginning, do not write any of my Hadiths down. Do not write any Hadith down. Because there was a fear, because both the sayings of the Qur'an and the Hadith were coming to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so when he would mention it, there was a fear the Qur'an and Hadith would get mixed up. And if you look at the Christian religion, they say the Book of God. But if you look at the Book of God, they have letters in there from Paul and so on. So that means according to them, any religious person saying something is a word of God. And we are so strict, we're saying even Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam words, some are directly the words of Allah and others are inspirations from Allah. Like hadith is inspiration from Allah. It's not the direct words of Allah. And Quran is the direct words of Allah. So we are so strict, we won't even call the Prophet's words directly the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We won't even do that. And other religions, they were so lax, they, the letters of pious people end up in their books. So that's how strict we are as a community. We don't let things just fly. We actually are very strict in how we label things. So as I mentioned in the beginning, the B.S. had a fear that uh, Quran and Hadith will get mixed. So he said, don't write any Hadith down in the meantime. So the Muslims were only allowed to write the Quran down first. After a while, when there was a clear distinction, then he said, okay, you can write the hadiths down. Then there was another fear that the Jewish narrations in their books that were coming, that were in Medina Munawwara because of the Jewish community that was there. So a lot of people that were studying the Torah, they had good knowledge of the previous religions. So we call them the Bani Israel Riwayat, the Israeli narrations. So, Initially, because there were some good messages or good stories in the Israeli narrations, so there was a fear even those stories might get mixed up with the Quran message. So initially, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said, do not narrate anything from the Israeli narrations. But after a while, when it was very clear that the Bani Israel Ayat will not get mixed up with the tafsir of the Quran, then he said, okay, go ahead, you can narrate their stories. So from the beginning, religion, the Prophet Sallallahu whenever he teaches a religion, there was always, there's always a fear, what if the community mistaken, what is expected from them? So the hadith that I recited in the beginning, in there Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said, whoever started something in the religion that was not in the religion, then we reject it. Then it is rejected, we do not need it. In other words, religion is already established, we don't need new additions to the religion. Again, the wording is very specific. Nabi Sallallahu said, ma laysa minhu, whatever is not already part of the religion, and it has nothing to do with the religion, then you cannot add it. But if it's part of the religion already, you can't really add it. All you can do is refine it. For example, look at the Islamic courses around the world, any Islamic studies. If I tell you go to this madrasa, this university, Malaysia University, go to Islamic studies, they'll, then I'll tell you how long, how many years is the course. You will say, well, it's a five-year course. 
then you become this, this, this in Islamic studies. So if somebody tried to be problematic, they'll say, oh, it's not a bidah. Because you're learning, you're doing five years of Islamic studies in an Islamic madrasa or university, is that a bidah? So we'll say, no, studying is not a bidah. Just because the university or the madrasa, they put a few years and a few books in there, that does not make it a bidah. Because studying is already part of religion. Studying is already part of the religion, that university, the madr Islamic university or the Islamic madrasa, they just put a few books together, that cannot be a bidah, because it's already part of the religion. Anything new is a problem. That's why when the Quran was being written, Umar who encouraged it, let's write a Quran down in one big book. And Abu Bakr who said, No, the Bisa never had a book in his time, a full book, so why should I do it? And then he kept explaining it, and the understanding we get from there also is there was some Quran written in the times of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so it's okay to write the full Qur'an afterwards. Now all this, now that all this is clear, now we get to the celebration of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's birth, Milad. Because he's born in Rabi'ul Awal, many, many people, they think there has to be some type of a remembrance or a celebration. And I'm using two words, remembrance and celebration. So remembering the Prophet ﷺ through a lecture, through a bayan, that does not look like a problem because the Sahaba, the Muslims from beginning till now, we always think about the Prophet ﷺ, we talk about him, we talk about his life, we talk about his sunnahs. Every Juma basically is a remembrance day of the Prophet ﷺ. We're talking about him all the time. So is it a problem to remember the Prophet ﷺ any time of the year? No, it's not. But if we're going to celebrate his birthday, that becomes a bit of a problem right there. Because celebrating his birthday is not really part of the religion. There is one surprising hadith that mentions, and Nabi Sallallahu says, I fast on Monday because I was born on a Monday. So there might be multiple wisdoms, but one of the wisdoms, he's saying, I fast on a Monday because I was born on a Monday. So, but again, fasting is a worship. It's not a cake cutting. Cake cutting is different in Rabiul Awal and fasting is different. So Nabi Sallallahu said, I fast on a Monday because I was born on a Monday. But if we look around in the Muslim world, there's people that celebrate literally the birthday. They make it look like a party. They have lights, green lights, balloons, cakes. Now it's becoming like a childish drama now in some parts of the world. So as I mentioned, if the Muslim community gets together, they talk about the Prophet Sallallahu life, that is not a problem. But anything too far out there, it becomes a bit of a problem. And then, this is where it gets really dangerous. Where people start having, having those kind of nasheeds, or songs, or whatever you want to call them, where they're saying, oh Prophet, come, join us. If you start saying that, whoa, we have gone too far. Because now you're imagining the Prophet travels around the world on his birthday to say hi to everybody. Like, sorry, that's not part of the religion. He does not go around the world on his birthday. In fact, we don't even know which day he was born on. Most of us think he was born on the 12th of the month, the, the Rabiul Awal month. Many of us think 12th is the, the date, and that is the famous opinion but it's not the more correct opinion. The most correct opinion is the ninth of the month. So it's not Bara Rabiul Awal, it's nine Rabiul Awal he was born on. <coughs> In fact, he passed away on a 12th Rabiul Awal. In fact, he passed away on a 12th Rabiul Awal. So if somebody celebrating 12th Rabiul Awal, it's more closer to celebrating his death day than celebrating his birthday. His birth is actually on the 9th, more authentic view. Although there's a view that he was born on the 12th, but the stronger opinion is no, he was born on the 9th of Rabiul Awal. So from there, I hope it's quite clear if somebody wants to celebrate the Milad, what they mean by that is just a few lectures, then that would be fine. A few words of poetry of the, how, how amazing the Prophet ﷺ was, it's fine. The Sahaba used to say the poetry on behalf of Nabi ﷺ. We know Hassan radiallahu anhu. Hassan who was a famous poet of the Prophet He would defend the Prophet and the religion through poetry. 
And one day Nabi Sallallahu wanted to encourage him a lot, so he said, uh, he made him stand on the member and said, go ahead, say your poetry in opposition of the Quraysh, and may Allah give you the assistance of Jibreel alayhi salam. Allahumma ayyidhu biruhi al-Qudus. Allah give him the strength or the, the help from Jibreel alayhi salam. So imagine how big of a dua that is, because one Sahabi was using poetry against the Arabs, and the Arabs knew one of the highest ways of communication was poetry. So that's why poetry was a very powerful tool in the times of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as a tool to teach and to, uh, to go in opposition of the Quraysh that were doing a lot of uh, hateful speech against the Muslims and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So again, if somebody is celebrating Milad through just a few bayans and a few clear nasheeds, that should be okay. But anytime the nasheeds or the bayan has the words of come join us or, or welcome a prophet, as in welcome, if they mean, oh, he came to the world a thousand years ago, that's fine. But if you mean welcome as in come today in 2022, that's a big problem. If somebody said, oh, we welcomed the prophet that time, we welcomed the prophet that time, that's different. But if you're saying, oh, prophet, welcome to our mosque today, to our birthday party, big problem. Very big problem. The Prophet does not travel to birthday parties. So this is where if somebody tells us a milad is a bid'ah, this is what they're talking about, where the milad is going too far away. The milad is going too far, we're going into too deep into bid'ahs. So if somebody gives a basic lecture, that should be fine. If, somebody, if some mosque has some type of an event, it's fine, it's not a big deal. But if any time we go too far with it, we start welcoming the Prophet to our gatherings, and uh, so on, or we start cutting cakes, then that is a, definitely a problem that was never done. And lastly, this is not too related, but I wanted to also add this to the discussion, is what if somebody's traveling to pious places where great scholars have lived in the past? For example, Bukhara is a town. So if Imam Bukhari, let's just say, for assumption, he's buried there, let's just say that. So if somebody was to go and say, I want to go see his library, I want to see his bedroom where he studied, where he wrote his books, I want to go to where he was buried, as long as the person is doing it just to see how beautiful the, the person's life was, and to see how spiritual the sheikh was, you can do that. You can go to somebody's place of birth, somebody's passing away, his grave, you can just go there just to put you into spiritual high, so you can be like, okay, amazing, this person spent thousands of his hours of his life, in capturing the religion, to writing the books of religion. But if you're going there to make dua to the person in the grave, if you're making dua directly to the person, oh, you give me something, oh, shit. That's obviously not allowed. That's never gonna be allowed. So a grave visiting is a very delicate topic. And the problem is the educated class, they might understand it. But the uneducated class, that's where the problem starts. When they start going to the grave, everything is upside down. They're buying cloths to put on the grave, they're putting flowers all over. There's no need for that. The guy is dead, he doesn't need clothes and flowers. Or food. And, he, and no matter how special somebody is in the grave, he cannot give you anything. So we can't make dua to him. Never ever can we do that. That is the pinnacle of shirk. That is the highest level of shirk where you're worshipping the person asking him for help. So we can never, ever, ever even imagine doing that, standing in front of somebody's cover and making dua to the person. So if you see anybody and they're going to a grave but they're making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that should be fine. Same thing with somebody passing away today. Let's just say my family members passed away and I go to the graveyard in Toronto and I bury somebody. Can I stand there? Yeah, I'm making dua to Allah. I'm saying, oh Allah, forgive this person. I'm not making dua to the person in the grave, I'm praying to Allah, oh Allah forgive the person in the grave. Not the other way around, so that should be fine again. So I hope it's quite clear, but again, education is very, very important. Many of us are coming from those parts of the world where our forefathers, many generations ago, were either Hindus or Buddhists. Many of us, our forefathers, many generations ago, were either Christians, Buddhists, or Hindus. So our culture very easily goes back to those cultures. So we have to be very, very careful. 
and may Allah SWT save us forever and ever from bid'ah from bid'a because every time the hadith mentioned, every time somebody adopts a bid'ah, he's leaving a sunnah. Because every time we try to be extra and add new things to the religion, we're dropping a few things on the other side. It's like you over-decorate one part of the table, still things will start falling off on the other side of the table because you're putting too much things on this side. That's how bid'ah and innovations are. The more we create new things in the religion, the real things will fall off the religion. So may Allah give us a big to understand, may Allah save us from every, every part of bid'ahs and more seriously the shirks, may Allah save us from all these things. If someone can please give the azan.